Hi, I'm Howard Tierski, CEO of Moving Interactive, here at the Moving Interactive Digital Innovation Center in New York City. In today's installment of our Digital Innovation Series, we're going to talk about digital governance, how large enterprises can find the right way to coordinate digital efforts across a wide range of groups. Speed is one of the most essential elements of success in the digital world. The technology is changing rapidly. Your competitors are moving rapidly. Your customers' needs and expectations are changing rapidly. And because speed is so essential, if you are a company of any significant size, you need multiple teams working on different initiatives all at the same time, perhaps a great number of different teams, some internal and some external. And yet, all that autonomy can create problems and conflicts. I'll talk about three main of those conflicts today. The first one, conflict of customer experience. If the same customers are hit with a variety of different websites and mobile applications that all look different, require different unique logins, perhaps overlap, don't talk to each other, those customers are likely to be unimpressed at the least and potentially very frustrated. We call this conflict enterprise versus customer. The second conflict, unproductive competition or team versus team conflict. Even if teams are given total autonomy, there are some resources which are fixed. These include space on your home page, the ability to email your customer list. If many different groups are constantly blasting your list independently, you aren't going to be able to maintain that list for very long. Customers will opt out. Other fixed resources include domain names, search engine marketing terms. Can you imagine multiple groups within your company unknowingly bidding against each other on Google for the same branded terms? Believe me, it happens a lot. Conflict number three, technology mess. If every group within the company makes different technology choices, you're likely to suboptimize your capital investments at best, and worse, have difficulty maintaining the skills to support such a diverse array of technologies. It's expensive and difficult to do well. We call this team versus enterprise, because individual teams often prefer the freedom to choose the technologies that work best for their individual needs, but it creates, as I said, a mess for the enterprise. And aside from those three, there are other problems with lack of governance, including compliance risk, branding problems, security breaches, inconsistent metrics, and others. So we need to enable speed, but with some avoidance of these conflicts. And that's where governance comes in. We'll talk about how to do that. But first, let me give you a, a little analogy of another example where governance supports speed. Naturally, one place to look for models of governance is government. What's great is that government gives us plenty of examples of both good and bad ways to govern. But let's take a look at one that is actually pretty helpful, motor vehicle traffic. We all have places we want to get to, and we want to jump in our cars and get there as fast as possible. And at the same time, we don't want conflict. We don't want to crash into other cars. Not only would this be painful, but it would slow us down. And so we have a set of rules, which we all know and agree to follow, that enables us to go fast focus primarily on our own destination, uh, but also be aware of the rules and other traffic around us. Governance in that case, it's not about total control. Traffic rules don't tell you where to go. They don't tell you what route to take or when to travel. They simply create boundaries to stay within. So defining rules is the first step of governance. Second, we have enforcement. So continuing with our motor vehicle analogy, I'll be perfectly honest and say that if I didn't know that there would sometimes be a cop hiding behind a tree with a radar gun, I'd probably drive well over the speed limit, and so would a lot of other people, no doubt. And before long, the rules would have no meaning because they would be largely disregarded. So some form of enforcement is essential for governance to really work. And third, we have what I call support for the law abiding. In the world of traffic, this includes having paved roads, lights, painted lines, stop sites, stop lights, et cetera. OK, so I'm guessing no matter what your politics about government, government may be, we can probably agree that this is an area where government is, is pretty helpful and all those rules and the enforcement of those rules really allow us all to get to our destinations much faster and more reliably than otherwise. So let's go back through these three aspects of governance in the context of the digital world. What rules do we need to create in the digital space and how do we do that? Well, each company and situation is different, but there are three broad categories of rules that those that govern user experience, such as branding, navigation, and URL standards, for example, 
Those that govern fundamentally technical matters, such as platforms, security, even things like commenting and storing code. And rules that govern business processes, such as legal compliance, privacy policies, email rules, site metrics, etc. Now you can use those as a, as a starting point to define the categories that make sense for your enterprise. There's also a more complete list of rules uh, and rule categories available on our website. Now, those are some categories to consider in your enterprise when creating governance models. But, but bear in mind, more governance is not necessarily better. Here's a fundamental rule. Governance should only be put in place for a reason that is clearly understood and ideally well communicated. And its scope should only be as broad as its benefit. For example, in some highly regulated industries like financial services and pharmaceuticals, careful business process governance over content might be essential. In other industries, it may be unnecessary and a barrier to speed. In order for your rules to be of value, there must be some form of enforcement. There are two parts to enforcement, monitoring and consequences. You need to determine what the best methods for each might be in your case. And in fact, different categories of rules might need to be monitored differently. For example, some rules might be monitored at the procurement level. So if a group tries to purchase non-compliant software, there is a checkpoint. Some companies appoint a brand czar who reviews all branded material for compliance with corporate identity rules. Now, consequences in a corporate environment have to work a little differently than in traditional government, as we probably can't throw non-compliant project teams in jail. In fact, the first type of consequence that's good to define are positive consequences for compliance. But on the stick side of the equation, one key tactic is to have some kind of exceptions report that gets escalated to someone senior in the organization who can apply pressure on those who seem to be disregarding the governance rules. Now, the last of these three steps we said was supporting the law abiding. Each rule that is created needs an associated set of documentation that helps teams understand, one, why that rule was created, two, how to comply, and three, how to get help or request an exception when appropriate. Okay, this is a deep topic and we could go on, uh, but for now I'll wrap it up with this invitation. If you have further questions or would like a consultation on how to make these practices successful within your organization, reach out to us at info at movinginteractive.com or post a question on any of our social media locations or on our website. And I invite you as well to come to movinginteractive.com to sign up to receive future installments in our digital innovation series and participate in our community of digital innovators. With that, this is Howard Tierski, CEO of Moving Interactive, coming to you from our Digital Innovation Center in New York City, wishing you tremendous success with all your digital initiatives.